13 on your sidelines. Sponsored by Rand Insurance Group, a better path forward. Thank you to the West Ottawa cheerleaders for welcoming us back to 13 on your sidelines. We now focus our attention on Grand Rapids Catholic Central. You know, the season didn't start as planned for CC. They got thumped by the defending state champs from Illinois last week. But for the Cougars, there wasn't much time to lick their wounds. They welcomed Detroit area powerhouse River Rouge to the cat. First quarter, Catholic Central on the 24 handoff to Kellen Russell Dixon gets lost in the smoke, pops out, makes it a touchdown, 10 zip, late first quarter. Connor Wolf standing tall in the pocket, takes a big shot, but finds Jameson Williams deep. He's in the end zone, makes it 17 zip. Second quarter, Cougars on the four. Connor Wolf keeps it himself, runs this one in for another score to make it 24 to nothing. Third quarter, Cougars on the three. Wolf escapes the pocket, finds Williams again in the end zone, and that touchdown makes it 31 to nothing. Now, late in the third quarter, Catholic Central on the one yard line, handoff to Colin Russell Dixon. Sneaks his way in for another score. Cougars running tall, 38 to six, the final. Now, Caledonia started its season off with a win at Michigan Stadium last week, but as cool as that was for the Scots, they were also happy to be back home this week, especially since they've got some new turf. Let's take you out to Myers Stadium, AKA the Ralph, as Caledonia squares off against North Farmington. The Fighting Scots led 21 nothing at half and add to it in the third quarter. Blake Heron bounces around and breaks the plane. Caledonia goes up 28 to nothing. Next Scott's drive, Brody Betzer buys time and then fires it to Lincoln Senti. And Senti sends it into the promised land for the 31 yard score. He's a freshman. He's a freshman. Caledonia leads 35 nothing. As electric as the offense was, the defense was just as good. Maddox Wysocki with the big hit. The Raiders would turn the ball over on downs later in the drive. That sets up another freshman, Dallas Moody. He rodeos into the end zone for the nine yard score. He's a freshman. Caledonia unable to pull off the shutout, but the Scots win big 42 to seven. They improved the two and up on the year. Not many teams had to worry about their conference schedules this week, but Tri-County and Reed City sure did. 13 on your sides, Matt Guard was there as these two teams squared off in a CSAA gold action. Yeah, guys, these two teams shared the conference championship last year with Big Rapids, but you best believe the Vikings and Coyotes are wanting it all to themselves this time around. First quarter, Max Hammond takes it up the gut, gets away from everybody, 71 yards, plenty of room, touchdown. Two-point conversion fails, it's 6-0 Coyotes. Don't say Coyotes. To the second quarter, Reed City takes advantage of a Tri-County turnover. Hammond finds Pater again. That makes it 14 zip Coyotes. Vikings trying to get back into it. Owen Barenwald, he can't find anybody. So he's going to take off. He's going to lower the shoulder right at the goal line. Touchdown. That cuts the lead. Tri County gets some momentum going into half, too. Landon Jackson's pass gets picked off. It's Brennan Grabinski taking it away. Tri County posts a second half comeback and wins 28 20. The Vikes are 2 0, guys. 13 on your sidelines, MVP of the week, sponsored by Rant Insurance. Well, there's a lot to be excited about this year on 13 on your sidelines. The 45 minute show is back, the cheerleaders are back, and it's almost time to welcome our MVP of the week live and in person in the studio for the first time since 2019. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we have to remind you of the nominees. All right, all right, all right. High school football teams from around West Michigan played all over the state last week, and it's time to meet the five guys who stood out from the pack. Not even the severe weather on Thursday night could slow down candidate number one. That's Granville running back Jaden Terry. Tank could not be stopped by Grand Blank as the Bulldog rushed for 242 yards and five touchdowns in Granville's 41-13 takedown of the Bobcats. It was very tough to pick just one guy from South Christian, but we went with Mr. Do-It-All, Jake Vermas. The Sailor senior got it done on offense, defense, and special teams. He recorded five catches for 117 yards and two touchdowns, a 46-yard punt return for a TD, and one interception in South Christian's 66-42 win 
over Grand Rapids Christian. MVP candidate number three had a big game in the big house. Caledonia wide receiver Maddox Greenfield was a madman in Ann Arbor. The senior hauled in seven catches for 200 yards and four touchdowns. The last touchdown for Greenfield was the biggest one. A 53-yard score with 58 seconds remaining to seal the 35-28 dub for the Scots over Romeo. Next up is the hero for North Muskegon on Friday night. Junior kicker Owen Booth nailed a 23-yard field goal with five seconds left to give the Norsemen the 17-14 victory over Pawama Westphalia and a memory Booth will never forget. Our fifth and final MVP candidate is only a sophomore. It's Union running back Jesse Phillips, who burst onto the scene at Hausman Field with 245 rushing yards on just 11 carries to go with three rushing touchdowns. One of those scores went for 83 yards. Phillips was a big reason why the Redhawks dominated Ottawa Hills 60-16. We had more than 7,000 votes cast this week, and in a come-from-behind effort, kicker Owen Booth wins the MVP this week with 44% of the vote. Welcome, <laughs> Owen. First off, what was going through your head during that last-second field goal? So, I was really nervous, but I, I kicked it, and it went in, but I'm happy. Yeah, that's so. all that matters, right? Got to get <laughs> the field goal in. My question yeah. is, obviously, after it went through, your teammates mobbed you. There was still time on the clock, but it was a big team celebration. You could see how excited yeah. everybody was. What was that moment like when you were it, being celebrated by everyone? It was crazy. I've never felt anything like that, and it was it's a good feeling to help the team win like that. I got to know what was the Monday like at school, because everyone we oh. were talking about was like, <laughs> he's got to be the coolest guy at North Muskegon on Monday. What was it like coming back to school? Yeah, I had a lot of teachers congratulating me, a couple students, but it was cool. All right, well, go ahead. Why don't you introduce us to the teammates you brought with you tonight? All right, so over here, I got my wide receiver, Landon Christensen, and then QB, James Young, and then TJ Byard, oh, wide receiver TJ Byard, and then O-line, D-line, Jack McNally, and then he, Ben Myers, he plays like everything. And then I got Jackson Bean, he plays O-line. <laughs> nice number, Jack. Um, my question is, you guys were able to, obviously, after that game against PW, it was real tough. Had to have that field goal and the onside kick. I saw you pull that yeah. off to get the win. A little bit easier this week, but what were the adjustments like in practice? Um, I don't really have any, honestly. But Fair I enough. just kicked a couple of times, trying to let my leg heal. But The life of a kicker good. is not a taxing <laughs> one, folks. I'm telling you, if you want to have a long career without a lot of wear and tear, be a kicker. 23-yard <laughs> yeah. field goal for the game winner. What's the farthest field goal you can kick? Uh, so a few days ago in practice, I hit a 42-yarder, oh, okay. but it went in like with ease. So probably like 45, 50 maybe. All right. well, you heard it here. He's good from 50. Yeah, I like it. <laughs>